imagine you're going to an appointment and you're confronted with one of these. Do you think you can figure it out? Have you ever thought about why the things we see in our world look the way they do? Does it have to be that way? Maybe, just maybe, it doesn't have to be that way. Oftentimes, information that we see is confusing. It's written by experts who use jargon, or it has to fit a certain format, or it's locked in a big system of documents. And what that means is the information often goes over our head, we don't know how to interact with it, or it just doesn't fit the way we want to use it. We all have things called mental models, and that's the way we think about things, how things work, how things are in the world. And when our mental models don't match with the information that we're presented with, it's confusing. And oftentimes, we don't even question why the information looks the way it does. It's probably because it's been done that way for a long time, or maybe it's expensive to change. Fundamentally, there's a fear of changing. I've been dealing with this kind of thing for pretty much all my life. I grew up in three different countries, in three parts of the world. I speak three different languages, and I had to navigate different cultures. And as is often the case with immigrant families, I had to explain a lot of things to my family, to my parents. I had to teach them how to read a report card that I brought home from school. Or I had to explain to them why a perfect score for the SAT's test is 1,800 points and not 100%, which is what they were used to. Without really knowing it, I've been dealing with this kind of thing one way or another. Um, first, it was between languages, so English to Japanese or Spanish to Japanese, and then it was from verbal to visual. I went on to formally learn about this kind of thing at graduate school, and I've been a practicing information designer and an educator. And I still continue to do it after 25 years now through my practice and my teaching. So this kind of thing, dealing with information, it's actually something that happens all over. It's a global phenomenon. We're asked to deal with complex information in different areas of our lives. Travel, healthcare, education, retirement, finance, right? And so truly useful and usable information becomes really important in our lives. Imagine you're a cancer patient facing radiation. Rather than having a pamphlet that the doctor gives you that's filled with jargon and that's kind of scary to look at, what if the doctor walked you through the process, walked you through that experience that you're about to have in a way that's understandable and that's familiar? And it has a section to put your particular treatment in it. Right? So it's not generic anymore. It becomes something that's specifically for you that you can reference again and again. Or even something as mundane as that parking meter that I showed you earlier. Right? So what if you are the person that's actually in front of this and you're faced with information that doesn't really match with the way the machine wants you to use it? After all, we are trying to get to that meeting, not trying to figure out how that machine works. So we can change that shape of the information there to match the process. Three steps, one, two, three. Designers like me um, have a choice of different processes to use to understand the context that we're designing for. And so first step, we try to identify the problem, what's keeping them from understanding, what's creating the barriers, right? How can we help them incorporate the information so that they can act on it? After all, we want to get them to the meeting, not use the machine. And then we want to learn what they actually do when they're confronted in the situation. We might go and observe them. We might talk to them. We might even participate with them in the activity that they are embarking upon. And then we take the learnings from that step and we create different ideas. And this is probably what designers have done best. We put shapes to ideas. We prototype, right? And sometimes we even prototype with them. We co-design the ideas and the solutions. And then we evaluate it and refine it until we're satisfied. Um, so as I mentioned before, we all have mental models, right? the way that we understand how things work, how the world is. And what we want to do, the goal is to try and design for those mental models, not to impose other factors that might get in the way. If you are someone that's using the information, 
and fit, let's face it, we all are, um, we should question why things look the way they look. And if you're the person that's creating something for somebody to understand, think about the user, go learn about them, and make that bridge. Try to understand those mental models. And envision how the new shape of that information could be something that's much better. Thank you. <laughs>